acid bases and pH. Now we are going to do about the salts. Certain important useful products. And one such one is plastic soda or NaOH. This is known as plastic CAUSTIC, plastic soda. And commercially, it is known as plastic. Soda is not plastic. Now, how it is manufactured? The simple process is uh, electrolysis of electrolysis of concentrated solution of NaCl. That means aqueous solution of sodium chloride is electrolyzed, concentrated water. Now, what is going to take place? Let's see this one. NaCl plus H2O, we pass electricity. We are studying about electrolysis, splitting of a compound into its constituents. When electricity is passed, NaCl can decompose. We will be getting sodium, simply understand it, chlorine. This Na will further react with H2O, but our final product is NaOH and hydrogen. So, what takes place is through sodium chloride solution, the electricity is passed. We get acid soda, NaOH, hydrogen, and chlorine. And this process is known as chloralkali. Now, why it is known as chloralkali? Because one of the products is chlorine, other one is alkali. The acid sodium hydroxide is an alkali. All those metallic hydroxide which are soluble in water are known as alkalis. So sodium hydroxide is an alkali, chlorine is a phase, so that is why this process is known as chloralkali process. Now, when sodium chloride solution is electrolyzed, we get three important products plastic soda, chlorine, and hydrogen. Now, let us understand the uses of plastic soda. First is NaOH. Plastic soda is commonly used in the manufacture of soap. How the soap is manufactured? We are taking this plastic soda to this any vegetable oil inside a you are root. You take plastic soda and vegetable oil. After the reaction is over, we get salt and glycerin. Simple process. So plastic soda is used in the manufacture of soap. And especially the washing soap is prepared by this. Plastic soda is also used as a degreasing agent. Degreasing agent means to remove the grease. You know, nowadays, nowadays we have these uh, kitchen chimneys. The chimneys have to be cleaned with plastic soda. Any amount of oil plus dust particle which makes a greasy matter. And that greasy matter does not go with soap and etc. It can be easily removed by using plastic soda. So it is used as a degreasing agent. It is also used to remove, you know, the your furniture, your furniture will be having varnishes and etc. to remove this plastic soda. Industry it is used for many other ones, many other manufacturers, washing soda, etc. etc. Washing soda, soap and etc. is manufactured with plastic soda. The next one is hydrogen. You know that hydrogen is the lightest gas, it has the highest calorific value, but it is used as an industrial fuel. Hydrogen is not used as a domestic fuel because of it is explosive in nature, whereas it is used as an industrial fuel, one use. Hydrogen is used in rocket propellants. Rockets are the fuel, propellants are those which are about fuel plus a motor combustion. So hydrogen is used as a propellant. And hydrogen is also used in the preparation of vegetable tea. Like you can say that data is to be prepared. The solid facts to be prepared, hydrogen is used. These are the important uses of hydrogen. The next one is chlorine. The important uses of chlorine. You know, the most common way chlorine is used as a disinfectant agent. Disinfecting agent. For example, you know that your water is purified by adding chlorine to it. Certain amount of chlorine is passed to the water that gets the germ skill. So it is used as a disinfectant agent. Now, how does it function? When chlorine is passed or put into the water, when chlorine is dissolved in water, we get hydrochloric acid and HOCl. HOCl is known as hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid is an acid. 
So this HOCl1, we compose and we get hydrogen chloride and this is oxygen. So HOCl that is hypochromous acid decomposes to form hydrogen chloride and nascent oxygen. And this nascent oxygen is our visit as all the functions of chlorine. The germs present in water is very killed by the chlorine. The bleaching purpose is carried out with the presence of this oxygen. So all the important functions of chlorine, chlorine cannot do anything, it reacts with water and it also produces oxygen. And this oxygen, what is written? It is in the square bracket, that means it is a nascent oxygen. NaCNG, nascent oxygen. Nascent oxygen means oxygen which is in atomic form. And you know that molecules are stable, atoms are unstable. So the atom is the most reactive one. So that does all the function. So bleaching powder is sorry, chlorine is used as a disinfecting agent purpose. It is also used in the making of the other side of or PVC pipes. So for which chlorine is used. And one of the important uses of chlorine is to manufacture bleaching powder. Bleaching powder is manufactured by using chlorine. And how bleaching powder is manufactured? Bleaching powder is manufactured by making chlorine pass through slate like calcium hydroxide. The powder calcium hydroxide, which is coming from top and from down, chlorine is passed. So they get reacted and we get calcium oxychloride plus S2. And this is what is known as bleaching powder. Its chemical name is calcium oxychloride. Calcium oxychloride for bleaching powder. So chlorine is highly used in the manufacture of bleaching powder. So how chlorine is passed through calcium hydroxide or slate line. Now you know that in the market we don't get calcium hydroxide. We have prepared manufacturers. Manufacture calcium carbonate. How is that? The first chapter we have studied calcium carbonate on heating, we get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This calcium oxide is equivalent to now. To the calcium oxide, when water is added, we get calcium hydroxide. And that calcium hydroxide is also there. So the manufacture of bleaching powder, if it is one more percent, you need to write only this one. Chlorine is to be passed through slate line. And if it little bit more, this is not the part of the syllabus, you just do that. When chlorine gas is passed through slate line, we get this one. Now, there is a term given it. Bleaching powder should be kept in airtight containers. Bleaching powder should be kept in airtight containers. In case we leave that, suppose like if bleaching powder is left open. Then what happens? Suppose when calcium oxychloride is left in atmosphere, then it gets reacted with atmospheric carbon dioxide. If calcium oxychloride is left in atmosphere, it reacts with the carbon dioxide and forms calcium carbonate plus chlorine is gone. Chlorine is a gas which is still strong. So bleaching powder should be kept in airtight containers. The moment you leave it outside, what happens? Atmospheric carbon dioxide can react with it and calcium carbonate is formed and chlorine gas is lost. Chlorine gas is kept out. Understood? It? So that is why it should be kept in airtight containers. So you go to the market and ask for bleaching powder. The person gives you a packet and you open the packet and if it smells chlorine, then it is bleaching powder. If it is odorless, return it back. It is not bleaching powder. So bleaching powder should be kept in airtight containers because of this simple reason. The atmosphere carbon dioxide is reacted, calcium carbonate and chlorine is that's the reason when we open the packet we can smell chlorine. If the packet is open, chlorine gas comes out immediately. You get the smell, therefore it is chlorine. Otherwise, it is not bleaching. Understood? Now it is said that bleaching powder is used bleaching purposes. And how does it bleach us? It's not part of the syllabus, but I will briefly. From the bleaching powder, chlorine is generated. So what happens when calcium oxychloride is made to react with diluted acid sulfur? Very diluted sulfuric acid. We are getting calcium sulfate plus H2O plus carbon dioxide plus chlorine. So from the bleaching powder, chlorine is to be generated. Chlorine will get generated when it is reacted with diluted sulfuric acid. So what do we get? 
This is the one. That's it. S2O plus CM2. Then what happens? S2O plus CM2, as I told you earlier, we will be getting HCL plus HOCL. And from this, we get oxygen and that oxygen does the bridging. When it is added to the light, it becomes colorless. Bridging is a process of removal of colors. And dyeing is a process of adding or just opposite. So this is how bleaching powder bleaches. You know that chlorine is nowadays bleaching the standard corona. Sodium hypochlorite solution is used. Sodium hypochlorite is manufactured by reacting caustic soda with chlorine. When chlorine is passed through caustic soda solution, we get sodium hypochlorite. And that sodium hypochlorite also contains chlorine, and that is the one which makes the surface clean from viruses. And that's this in fact. Understood it? They say that uh, de sanitize or disinfect the place, they used to do the spray of sodium hypochlorite. So that sodium hypochlorite which gets the chlorine atom generated and that kills, combining with the water and oxygen and etc., the function is carried out. So that is how sodium hypochlorite is used. So important uses of chlorine. So we have studied acid soda use, hydrogen use, and chlorine. So one more compound what we are studying, which is important. The next compound is after the bleaching powder is washing soda and baking soda. After bleaching powder is washing soda. <coughs> washing soda is MA2CO3.10 This means what is this chemical name? Decahydrate, this is what is known as decahydrate sodium carbonate. Decahydrate sodium carbonate. Deca means pen, hydrate means water, so it can extend molecules of water. How this is manufactured? The washing soda is manufactured in CRD work, it is given ammonia plus H2O plus carbon dioxide. Combining, we get MSO HCO3. This is ammonium bicarbonate. And when this ammonium bicarbonate is MSO HCO3, gets reacted with sodium chloride, we are getting MAHCO3 plus ammonium chloride. So, <coughs> we need to manufacture ammonia. That is not there in the box, so you understand, in the sea, is two carbon dioxide. First product is ammonium bicarbonate. And when this ammonium bicarbonate is made to react with sodium chloride, we get MAHCO3 plus NH2CO. This is what is known as baking soda. So what is baking soda? Sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate, which is obtained by making this reaction. Now, when this baking soda is either MaCO3 is all bleeding, we get MaCO3 plus H2O plus carbon dioxide. This is how washing soda is prepared. Now, I'm going to say that we are studying in the first chapter. All bicarbonates are bleeding. Sodium bicarbonate are bleeding, it becomes washing soda, water, and carbon dioxide. This is how washing soda is prepared. Washing soda is prepared by heating. Baking soda. Understood it? And how baking soda is obtained? Ammonia, water plus carbon dioxide. We get ammonium bicarbonate. Ammonium bicarbonate. So we can combine all this. We can give all this reaction. MS3, H2O, CO2 plus NACL will be MACO3 plus NACL. This product we can take it out. Understood it? MSO3 is activated. So MS3, H2O, CO2 plus NACL will be. NaCO3 plus NSOCL. So this is how baking soda is manufactured and on heating baking soda we get washes. So this is how washing soda is manufactured. So there is a question, are these salts actually dry? Washing soda contains 10 molecules of water. This sodium carbonate is obtained further crystallized by which we get washing soda crystals. So this is how washing soda is prepared. Now there was a question asked earlier. A baker had forgotten to add a material while the cake is being baked and he found the cake very hard. This substance you did not add because the material that is added is this 
baking soda. What happens when baking soda is added on heating? It becomes it releases carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is the one which makes it in fluffy soft. So if you bake something without baking soda, it is going to be hard. You know that fermentation, like how the bread is made, fermentation process which carbon dioxide gets released, this makes the thing soft and fluffy. Similarly, baking process, baking soda is added. So what happens on baking soda on heating? Carbon dioxide is released and that makes the thing soft and fluffy. Understood it? Now, when baking soda is added to the cake, one of the product of the is washing soda. So that washing soda tastes like that of bitter. So therefore, baking powder contains baking powder contains an organic edible acid, tartaric acid, or some acid is added along with baking soda, and then it becomes baking powder. The difference between baking soda and baking powder is baking soda is sodium carbonate and baking powder contains an edible acid which neutralizes the taste of washing soda. You understand it? When baking soda is heated, what do we get? This is the material which is added to the cake. When the cake is baked, that cake contains washing soda and washing soda tastes bitter. So neutralize the taste of washing soda, what should be done? It must have certain edible acid. When an edible acid is added, the washing soda is reacted and washing soda taste is gone. So there is a basic difference between baking and washing soda. Washing soda, sorry, baking powder contains an edible acid. Just it clearly. The next topic, the last topic in that is Plus of Paris. Plus of Paris is CaSO4 dot half this two or this is POP plus of Paris or this is CaSO4 all twice is two. This is plus of Paris. Plus of Paris is prepared by heating. It is prepared by heating gypsum. Gypsum is CaSO4 dot two is two. When this is heated. We get CSO4 dot half is two plus one and a half is two. So CSO4, I write the name, CSO4 dot half is two plus one and a half. This is what is plus of So how do we prepare plus of paris? By heating gypsum at 100 degrees Celsius. <coughs> gypsum is here at 100 degrees Celsius. And if gypsum is heated above 100 degrees Celsius, <coughs> if gypsum is heated, what is gypsum? CSO4 dot 2 is 2O. When it is heated above, we get calcium sulfate plus 2 is 2O. This water of crystallization is lost. When the water of crystallization is lost, that is unhydrous calcium sulfate, this does not have any characteristics. Understood it? So, plus of Paris is prepared by heating gypsum at 100 degrees Celsius. This is a question asked. Controlled heating is heated. Uncontrolled heating, it becomes anhydrous, which is of no use. Then, to the plus of Paris, to the plus of Paris, when water is added, it becomes gypsum. Gypsum is a very hard material. Gypsum is a very hard material. So, that is when plus of Paris is being used to make Indian statues bandages, false roofing and etc. So what happens when water is added, it becomes gypsum. Gypsum is a very hard material, naturally occurring substance mined from the ground. And which is heated at 100 degrees Celsius, we get plus of Paris. To the plus of Paris, when water is added, it becomes gypsum. Understood it clearly? So all the property, this is another question. Why should gypsum plus of Paris be kept in airtight containers? Because if not, it absorbs moisture and then it becomes gypsum. Plus of Paris is very soft, POP is very soft, but gypsum is very hard. You leave the packet open, it absorbs moisture and it becomes hard, gypsum is a no use. Alright, so 